And with us right now, we've got David Wolf. David, you're the founder of Audavita. And Audavita is on the web at audavita.com. That's A-U-D-I-V-I-T-A.com. David, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you, Josh. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So what does Audavita do? So Audavita is a virtual uh, audio production company. Now, I will say that we also do some video these days just because of the evolution of podcasting. Oh, yeah. But our deliverables, uh, we work with authors, speakers, thought leaders, uh, business professionals, uh, producing podcasts and audiobooks. So the company's almost kind of bifurcated. I have two separate teams, one on the audiobook side. We do casting and talent for mostly fiction. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also do a lot of nonfiction, working with uh, recording re uh, authors remotely in the comfort of their home, uh, their own home. And this was all pre COVID. We were doing remote recording. So we've worked with authors all over the world, uh, recording them reading their own book. And, uh, and then on the podcast side, of course, uh, we're also working remotely and do a lot of recording. I have a team of about a dozen people, a mixture of admin, uh, administrative, uh, audio professionals. Some are producers that do production live like we are now with our clients as they record. So that's the quick version. I'm going to list off a few of your clients that you've worked with. And I think everybody listening is going to be like, oh, 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 oh my. <laughs> so you've worked with PBS, Disney, Discovery Channel, Southwest Airlines, Miller Brewing, Exxon. Let me know. Stop me if you uh, have heard one of these. Uh, Texaco, uh, Morgan James Publishing, Frito-Lay, Pepsi. Uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, so yeah. how do you get to a point as a studio where you get to work with all of these, uh, these huge brands? Well, that's a great, it's a great question. And um, I should say that the current company uh, is uh, an evolutionary uh, company that grew out of my start as a composer and producer for radio, television, and film. Mm -hmm. And many of the clients you just read were clients of ours producing music for commercials, audio for commercials. And mm -hmm. so we, uh, my career was really rooted in broadcast media long before the internet started, you know, I'm now 60 years old. So sometime when I was in my mid twenties, we'll say, I started a company in Dallas called Cry Wolf Music. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really the beginning of what I'll call my entrepreneurial spark and my aunt, some call it the entrepreneurial seizure uh, is, uh michael gerberism right and um hmm. and so so um th th how did it start 85 percent um calling the creative directors at ad agencies and 15 percent actually doing the work and then over time there was a fade a fade of, of uh, and the work began to find me rather than me finding the work i had to establish myself initially in the dallas market and then eventually we were competing with music companies all over the country. It's a very niche kind of business, re, uh, uh, creating and recording original music for film and radio and television. It's a very kind of narrow band and uh, a, tight, a tight group in the world. Yeah. So, David, uh, you know, just looking at your LinkedIn here, uh, you went to Niles East High School. Niles, which I state? did. Yeah, so that's Chicago area, North Chicago. Oh, okay. Niles, Illinois. Okay. All right. Yes. No, sure well, it's, it's not, it's it was, Skokie, Illinois, actually, is the name oh, of the village. Okay, and good. Of people, Skokie's on the map because it's for not such wonderful reasons, but there was a film called Skokie years ago with Danny Kaye and uh, I think uh, Mel Brooks was in it or somebody, uh, yeah. maybe Carl Reiner. Anyway, it wasn't, a, we, won't, we won't go there, but uh, Skokie is on the map and uh, that's where I grew up originally and then left Chicago in 85 and yeah. uh, went to Dallas shortly after we got married. There was another. How long have you been a radio host and, and podcaster? Because I'm looking at your syndicated uh, <laughs> well, experience, right. yeah. Small Biz America. You've been doing this a while, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes with age, right? So um, around 40, I'll back up a little bit. Around when I turned 40, I kind of wound down the music part of my life. I creative on demand as a business model was beginning. I was getting fatigued. You know, it takes a lot to take you to deep into your soul and write a piece of music every time you get a call from a client. So um, I took some time off and did some unrelated entrepreneurial ventures, which we can talk about if you like, because they were highly instructive, not always productive, but very instructive for me as an entrepreneur. And there are some stories to share there. But uh, right around 2005 or six, uh, I started doing a short format syndicated show called Small Biz America. And these were short, like problem solution features. They were 90 seconds long with a commercial in the middle. 
and I worked with Business Talk Radio Network, which was then out of uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. They've been sold since then. And uh, they popped me into about 75 markets. And so I was doing pre-recorded features, as they call them, that they would put as interstitials in between longer format shows. And that's really where it started. And then at some point, I shifted online to podcasting, and podcasting took off, as we now know. So I uh, sort of rode the, the, that the, originally it was terrestrial radio and then moved into that. So I, I cut my teeth, you know, I was self-taught as an interviewer uh, and did about, eh, about 250, 300 some odd interviews. And uh, some of them were good. <laughs> so and you look, as you go. It's, it's a journey. It's not a destination, as they say, right? So, so David, um, share with me your perspective on the state of podcast. Give us your state of the union for podcasting uh, for mid-2020 <laughs> here. Where are we? Well, I think that, uh, well, first of all, look, uh, like a lot of things, the state of the world with COVID and so forth has accelerated some of the trends. We're, talk we're talking about remote learning, education, schooling, meetings, festivals, film festivals, author festivals. My wife is involved in producing those. Everything, much of the world is shifting to communicate online. And podcasting was already there, but now we're seeing in our production business a surge in demand for new show creation and production and assistance, which is what we do. We work with a lot of startups uh, podcast-wise. So uh, we have a few existing shows, and some are well-known, but, uh, but we, so where is the state of it? So it's growing like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. um, there are, what, some million shows out there. I think that um, formatically, I think there are some opportunities to mix it up and make it more interesting. So we like to work with our clients in the beginning stages of what we're doing to, to, to break format a little bit. In other words, maybe the first thing you don't hear is the intro with music. Maybe you hear part of the show and then later the credits and the opening comes in and, you know, mixing up the order. So the listen experience, listener experience, that is, is, uh, you know, you're turning corners and keeping them engaged and interested. So um, those are the opportunities I'm looking for. I think there's also possibly a trend towards shorter formats. Uh, although I don't, this is not ubiquitous to everybody. If the content's great, you know, people ask, how long should it be? If the content's compelling and great, it could go on for an hour. There was a story with a company we used to partner with. They, they had a three hour show about boxing. It was like play by play boxing. And they went on for three hours and they had a tremendously huge audience. So I don't think there's any rules. And that's maybe one of the rules is that you get to make it up. Yeah. You know, it was the first podcast movement that I went to, and this was now, what, six, seven years ago, six years so mm -hmm. I forget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and right back then, you know, I, I think that it is, it's so important that, you know, with a podcast, do what you want. You know, you're the one that's creating art. And just because you hear other podcasters doing it, doesn't mean you need to do it that way. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, even like, um, you know, people that do these interruptive ads and, and that sort of thing. Like, mm -hmm. the only reason you're doing that is because Clear Channel made it that way. You know, in the olden days of radio, yeah. you know, there are so many ways that you can use a podcast to grow your business. And that's going to be my next question, just in terms of like, you know, if you were, um, you know, it's some, you know, in terms of strategy, things that you've seen, you know, where do you see as the biggest opportunities for businesses to incorporate audio into uh, into their business plan or their marketing plan or their outreach well, plan, or their, you know, their yeah, no, absolutely, plan. Josh. I mean, this is the, the sort of, I just released a course called uh, David Wolf's podcast power launch and much of the, it's not about editing and recording and production. It's about full, exactly what you're uh, pointing to Josh folding in a communication strategy in the form in this instance in the form of a podcast to a position yourself as an authority yes. in your subject matter. Um, Define how you're going to show up as a host. Are you a curious question asker? Are you going to uh, pontificate on a particular subject? We have some clients that literally read articles they've written for trade journals, and that is the show with a little bit of ad lib. Uh, is it an interview format where you want to invite people you want to do business with on the show so that a bond can form during this recording event and something good will happen? I like to say that's your first audience, the audience of one. In the beginning, you, it's a fantasy if you think you're immediately going to have 150,000 listeners right away. So focus on inviting people you want to do business in and make that a develop, uh, business development, say that fast three times, mm -hmm. uh, a business development strategy, the, the doing of the podcast itself. And the audience will come eventually as you begin to grow uh, the number of guests you had and as they yeah. throughput the, the uh, promotion of their appearance on your show. 
Yeah, so excellent. A few, a few so, ideas there. The other thing I like to say, I'll just add a little bit, Josh, if you don't mind, is we, we like to build in, you want your listener to do something. You're, 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 the, the content's there in the business sense to, to help someone transform themselves or their business in some way. And in doing that, you're probably a content generator with a program uh, or a course or a consultative model or some way that you can help these people grow their business or improve their lives. So have a call to action. Build that into what you don't just do a show and say goodbye bye. Make sure that you're actually engaging people, lead them to a, a landing page, lead them to some activity or some action that you can measure and that benefits them as well. Uh, so, David, uh, explain a little bit more about the services that you provide, who you work with, um, you know, yeah. what, what would someone, how would people, how do people engage with you? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So the way I like to think about our business is, again, we're a content production company at our core. Um, and so we work with authors, publishers, speakers, thought leaders who are either writing a book or about to write a book and create an audio book version of their uh, work, their title for Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, and then there are about 30 or 35 other channels that we uh, can help get them on. And so our, our solution on the audiobook side of our business is very turnkey. As I mentioned, we, we cast uh, professional talent, when, usually when it's fiction, but in a lot of cases, we're, we tend to work in the business space a lot. So we're working with help, uh, help, uh, self-help authors, people that are writing business books, uh, technical books sometimes. Um, and so they're the voice of their brand or what I like to sometimes call the voice brand, right? And mm -hmm. so they're the connectivity to market. We like to encourage them to be their own voice and we help them get what I'll call the best performance they're capable of as we record them remotely from the convenience of their home. So that's the audiobook delivery. We help with the distribution as well. It's all kind of baked into a per word pricing model. Uh, on, the, on the podcast side, we've covered a little bit of this already, Josh. I mean, really, we're helping, most cases, we're helping business owners create um, content in the form of a podcast to help propel some aspect of their business strategy. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, David, uh, any other uh, like calls to action or what, what people oh. would, uh, you know, go to autovita.com and find? Sure. So um, we are, uh, I should say, we're venturing a bit into video as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and because one trend, and we were talking about what's happening in podcasting, is that the value of video seems to be percolating a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, this, optimization around, around yeah, this, this podcast right now, I mean, it's, you know, uh, the podcast listening audience is great. Like, we love our audience, our listening audience. But I got to yeah. tell you, I mean, we, we happen to have a pretty big social media audience. And the visibility that we get from those little... 30 to 60 second video clips of this conversation right now exactly. is huge compared yep. to the audience, uh, the, the podcast listening audience for any one episode. Uh, so we worked that out and all of our podcasts go out on YouTube as well, but it's not the audio. Yep. We do the video. People don't want to watch audio on YouTube in my experience. They'd rather see, you know, your smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a connectivity on a visual level and everyone is visually sensitized. So it makes sense. We're conditioned by all things television for so many, uh, so many years. So makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. Well, good. Well, again, David Wolf, uh, founder, CEO of Audivita. The website is audivita.com, A-U-D-I-V-I-T-A. David Wolf, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. 